Hubert L. McConnell. He's a 93-year-old World War II vet. Uh, he was in the D-Day invasion of Normandy on Omaha Beach. And he's come here to share some things with you. So if you have questions, let me show you a couple of things and let him explain some stuff first. And the uh, Purple Heart there, that's the wounded medal. And the striped one over there on the far side is Silver Star. Staff Sergeant Hubert L. McConnell, 116th Infantry U.S. Army for gallantry in action against the enemy in Normandy, France. On the 17th of July, 1944, Staff Sergeant McConnell, in the face of enemy fire, voluntarily led a small group into the area and successfully retrieved the weapons and ammunition. As a result of this brave act, the weapons were reemployed to repel later enemy counterattacks. The initiative, bravery, and devotion to duty displayed by Staff Sergeant McConnell reflects great credit upon himself and the military service. What kind of weapon did you use? Well, a machine gun and a, and a rifle. You don't I, want was, I was a machine gun section leader, which consisted of two, two guns and two squads, the Battle of St. Lowe and the Battle of Brest, France. And bear friends. Once we had a, a battle on the coast in the first land. Okay, what I'm showing you now is from his division book. These photos were taken by the photographer assigned with their company. Has some obstacles on the beach, which carried an explosive on each, on the end of each one of them. So if you hit it, it exploded. But then the boat, boats are coming in. I heard one of the boats with the gate dropped on the front. The whole thing that you moved out. That boat hauled about 30 people. And we wait, had to wade to shore. We loaded them boats off the ship. And they're supposed to be rendezvous out there until all of them got loaded and move into the beach to the press going in. And uh, the coxswain on our boat, when we got loaded, he went straight in. And we were the first to jump. And there was a sandbar there we got behind and of course everybody seemed to be stunned they had protection behind the sandbar of course the lieutenant we had Bangalore torpedoes which shoved them together shoved them under the, there's a double apron barbed wire fence on top of the hedgerow they took that Bangalore torpedoes and blew the fence out we moved through there to inland. If they had mistaken, all of us made it to shore, but we lost two or three men after we got on shore. Our Sergeant Paragor, which was in my company, he got the Congressional Medal of Honor. <coughs> he captured about three, 30. 33 or 34 prisoners and brought them out by himself. Okay, what's that? Now we're going in place. Where he's at, the Germans had a, was underground, and had a hole up in the top, and had a border inside, and a map went around the wall inside, and had all the targets on it in the range of it. And they shot that mortar through that hole in the top of the, <coughs> to the targets around. That's where he got he got his men out of there. 
<laughs> and what happened to him? Huh? What happened to him? Oh, he was killed later. He, he walked out in front of a machine gun. And they riddled him. Yeah. There's the hedgerows that we had. See, the enemy was, was stationary behind that. We had to move, which was a dangerous, dangerous situation. Move from one hedgerow to the other. And you know, <laughs> them hedgerows are used as fences. There in France. And we was back over there a few years back, and there wasn't no hedgerow. And tore them all out and put built fence. And that tank, they had some of them with that probe on the front that they punched holes in the hedgerows and the engineers put explosive at it and blow them out before the tanks could move through. How long was he in the army? Four years, three months, and ten days. <laughs> I can remember that. Yeah. I was in combat 82 days before I got wounded. How were you wounded? How were you wounded? Right from shell. It come out of the sky. It had to because I was in, in a slip trench laying down. In the breast trench. That's where the sub pens were. And they had them all the way. And the metal on that's about 12, 14 inch thick. And I, you can see where our artillery hit and they couldn't penetrate it. And I assume, don't know, that the crackle from the shell that hit that thing bounced into the sky and a piece come down and hit me. Where were you hit? Where were you hit? Where did the shrapnel hit you? In the buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> where did you get wounded? What part? Breast front. That's where the sub pants was. Austin. Other people killed. How many people do you think you killed? Well, I, I, don't, I can't answer that. I don't know. Maddie, what was D-Day like? What was D-Day like for you? How did you feel? Well, they asked me if I was scared. Well, of course I was scared, but I didn't realize what was going, what was going to happen. I was like, uh, when we cut off up there at St. Lowe, all the planes, planes had to uh, run the tanks out, which had us surrounded. And the person peeled off, he had his guns open and it looked like he was coming right at me. And one of my men asked me, what was wrong with him? And I said, I, nothing and I don't know him. And I said, why are you he said, you're quiet as a sheep. <laughs> but I didn't realize that. Okay. Oh. Quietly, if you'll push...